Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. In the previous video, I showed the random makes that I had done with scraps over the summer, and some folks had indicated there are certain things that they'd like to see how were made. And I've got those assembled, and I'm hoping I can show those pieces in one short video. Um, and so let's get started. And they're in no particular order. I wrote down the items that people had requested and just randomly put them in stacks as they would stack. All right, the first one, well, not the first one, but the first one I'm going to share was at 2148 in the previous video, and it was a clothing tag that had been turned into a Laura Baim phone down, Laura Baim fold down, just a piece of paper here to fold down and include in a journal. So I'm going to do that one first, and I'll, I guess I'll put this I put the sewing machine up here, not because you have to sew, but because several of the pieces that I made have some sewing elements on them, and I'm going to honor that. But most of the time you can use pen stitching if you want the look of sewing without sewing, or just glue and not stitch it at all. And it's fairly quick, so that's why I thought I'd do that. All right, this one. Uh, first step was just a scrap of card. This happens to be craft, but it can, well, on this particular case, it was a tag, but then I added the card to it. And another scrap of paper, pattern paper, and I deliberately didn't choose the exact same paper so that you can see that it doesn't have to be a specific project uh, product. You can use whatever scraps and colors you like. I know some people find my color palette a little too neutral for their tastes, and the beauty of these is they can all be done using the colors and palettes that, that you prefer. All right, so I glued on a scrap, but I'm going to try to keep it in frame here and not have to go back and forth too much. Um, so a little bit of a scrap there, and then I put a little bit of a scrap of lace, and this is all that same lace that I showed on the previous video. I've just cu been cutting more bits off of it, and any scrap lace will work. Uh, this one was a handkerchief of some sort with s uh, some notable holes in it, so I didn't have a problem tearing that up a bit. And I'm going to just sew this little scrap of lace on there. That way, so I can, maybe hopefully you can see it. If not, well, it's just sewn on lace. And sometimes I will, I will glue the lace in place first, but I don't always do that. And sometimes I will crumble it a little bit, just depending on and. Um, let's see this. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, I'm going to try that part again. I don't change stitches all that often in this machine, so let's see. It's three. There we go. Okay, and then I want it to be a little bit narrower and a little bit smaller. All right, and... I'm going to do this because I want it to be, see this one's kind of crumply up. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of crumply up. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It's not really gathered. It's not really pleated. It's just crumply up. So that's what I'm going to do. And that, that tool helps with that process. I've got it on a slow speed so that I don't go faster than the machine likes. Okay, or basically so I don't make a mistake. All right, so I've got that piece sewn down. And if it's too wide or I don't like it, I can easily trim it at the end because it's just scrap. Okay, so there is the sewn bit. And then I'd put a label on top, just a blank, any old blank label or a ticket, a Tim Holtz ticket would work just fine. And I kind of like the balance of this one. Hmm. Oh, I guess that'll work just fine. And I wanted it to, like, like on here, I want it to drop down just a little bit over the edge. So I'll do that too. I'm trying to put all the tools in small area simply because I've got all the projects laid out. And 
and glued in place there. And then the flowers on this one, there's just a couple of these available everywhere. The clear, <coughs> pardon me, clear stickers. And I'm going to peel those off and put them in place. And then what I do on the back is I'll just put a little bit of baking soda or baby powder to keep it from being extra sticky. So that's that's how you achieve that. You can get the overflow look without. Oh, that's right. These are these are a challenge. They do come apart. They are stickers, even though they don't always seem like it. But getting it started sometimes is a challenge. Okay, there we go. Okay, and let's see. I want it to stick over the top just a bit. Put that there, and then the second one. Thank you for all the kind and wonderful comments. It's just a beginning of the year cold. It's not even beginning of year anymore, but it happens inevitably every year, especially when I'm in a new school in New Germs. It's just a cold. I'm absolutely fine. Um, let's see. Do I want that up? Do I want it down? Where do I want that? Over on this one, it's a little bit taller there. So you know what? I'm going to cut another sticker off. And that's the beauty of these two is you can... You can trim and cut them to suit whatever look you want. You know, if the leaves are in the wrong spot or that kind of thing. And I don't want it to go too high. Hmm. Okay. So I wanted to fill that gap. And some, sometimes I'll do that. I'll just cut the stickers to make them work with what I want. And I'll glue it down there or stick it down there. Okay. I want it a little bit taller, so I'm going to uh, match up the cuts. So I'll put that there, and then I don't want to waste that. I'm going to put this down here on top. There we go. Okay, I can like that. And now I've got this on. That will make me a crazy person. Okay, and flowers are in place. Uh, sticker gone. And then I think the last bit there, oh, there's a couple more things. Okay, so then the next bit was a uh, Tracy label, and any random label will do. Um, okay, I thought I got that up. Boy, I really did make a mess of things, didn't I? Um, I'm going to lift this up just a tiny bit because I want to give it a little bit of a tuck. I want to tuck the um, label underneath. I think, I think that's what I want to do. I grab some products from my scrap bins and the canisters let me make sure that's right side up yeah but I didn't I didn't overly plan and by that I mean I didn't uh, you know decide exactly where everything was going to go before I started well, let's go. I want a little bit to peek from the bottom all right so there is that and again I'll put baby powder or baking soda uh, not baking soda, cornstarch. That's what I'm looking for on the back of either of those. And then this one has an eyelet hole and a bit of string because, like I said, this was a tag. It started life as a clothing tag. There was a challenge for that. So I'm going to punch a hole down here. And I put, oh, here we go. So I'm say I put some little eyelets off to the side so that I could just grab them easily. And the eyelet, is that the right size hole? We'll find out. Okay, hole for interest, and then just a bit of string. I could use lace there too if I wanted a ribbon. And in fact, this one has string, and this one's kind of feminine, so I mean, they're both kind of feminine. I guess I could put string there, or I could put a bit of sari silk. No, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick with the what I did here. But I could all, just know that you could use lace or sari silk or whatever, whatever you choose. Now, I could also, if I wanted to drop a dangle on this, or a bead, or a charm, or what have you, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. If you were wanting a little bit more bulk or a little bit more decorative element, you can add that there. That would be really, really pretty on this. All right. String in place. And there you go. So a little bit different, but essentially the same idea. 
uh, the other thing, because I said it's a, a fold down, what I do is I get, um, I didn't put the paper on this because I wanted to show that it was a tag. Uh, the idea is this will fold down in the book. So you just do the same simple accordion plate. You glue your paper onto the back and fold it back and forth. And then when you put it into your book, it will fold down. And you don't need to see me glue paper on there. But that's all it is. You just make accordion plates. You can use your um, you can use your scoreboard or not. Completely personal preference. But so there you go. There's the first one. All right, let's go a little quicker for the next. This one was at 2210, and it's just an extra glassine bag turned into a double tuck. Uh, so there's a, a pocket right here, and then there is a pocket down here. So let me show you how I made that. And again, this one's sewn, which is, so I grabbed that. All right, this one's just a little bit bigger bag, but it was an extra bag or scrap bag. And these are available on Amazon, and I'm sure, and Etsy, lots and lots of places on Etsy. It is a glassine bag. Fold it to the width that you want, depending, like if you're using a tall, narrow journal, it might be a little narrower. If you're using a, a wider journal, maybe you want a wide pocket, whatever. I'm just going to make a random size. All right. So just took the end of the bag and folded it over. And I've got some bits here. Now on this one, I could leave it the way it is because it's got a really pretty coffee pattern and maybe I will. But on this one, you can see it didn't. It was just a solid color. So I just put a scrap piece of paper cut to that size. And I don't know that it adds anything by having that tissue paper. Well, let's look and see. And then just a couple little scrap bits are what I used to build a base. And I see, I really like that. So I'm not going to bother to put more paper on it. And it looks like there's a little bit of lace in there somewhere. This is too much. So I grabbed it. That's again a scrap of that lace. Um, let's do that. Okay. Oh, I tore it. So that's okay. We'll put both pieces on. It will work just fine. Okay. And I'm going to glue this, these two pieces together just so they hold in place while I sew them on the machine. I don't know how well you can see that because it's black, sorry. And I've got a smaller work screen. So I just took a black torn strip and I glued it to a piece. This is, it looks like it's a piece of book spine. When I tear apart a book, I save the old spine or if it's already disassembling or tearing apart itself, I, I save that because I really like the way it looks. And then I'm gonna put a bit of glue to hold this in place while I sew it. And that's just an off cut of that lace. It was on the other side on this one, but I guess that doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't really matter at all. I just want it to show, so I'll do that and I'll do that. Okay, and let's see. Glue that into place. It's just a tag, uh, not a tag, a Tracy label. And any label can be a Tracy label. I just happen to have a lot of hers, so I call them all that. All right, so I put all those little bits together, sort of, and now I'm going to sew them, and it looks like I did a zigzag on the last one. How wide was that? Oh, it's fine. So I will do the same thing. I'm just going to sew the lace into place right here and all the way up that tag. personal preference, I keep a pair of scissors next to the sewing machine just for threads. That way they always stay sharp and I don't use them for anything else. Okay, and then I'm going to glue down to make this a pocket. So when I'm, after I folded this over, I'm going to put a bit of glue here and here. Now I could sew that also, but I didn't on the previous one, so I'm not going to on this one. I'm trying not to veer too far from it, but just know that you have you have choices, you have options with that, sewing or not sewing. And I guess I oriented this one 
opening to the left so I oriented this one. But you could do the same thing opposite. You could, well, this would be bottom now. But I mean, if you wanted to fold it the other way or glue it the other way, you could if you wanted it to open to the right as opposed to opening to the left. So that has created a pocket at the top. And then you still have a full pocket back here to put a tag or a card or something in. And then just put, um, let's see, I had it on here, so I'll glue that down. And then a butterfly, there's a little bit of a butterfly on there, and that transitions, or combines, I shouldn't say it transitions, it combines the pockets and the two pieces together. And let's see. I should have moved the lace. Maybe that's why I had the lace over here on this one. Well, that's okay. We'll just go like that. I don't need to be able to read the, the words. I don't even know what they mean. There, it looks like they're in Spanish, maybe. Hopefully I don't say anything obnoxious. I apologize if they do. All right. And then I will grab a black pen and just give this little guy some antenna. Maybe they're a little short, but... And that, that is that. And the same version, different, different items made with it. Similar version, not the same. <clears throat> okay, moving right along. Trying to move right along. Uh, okay. This one, this is one of, this was actually a copycat of Tracy Fox. It's, I mean, hers is different, of course, because Tracy is amazing. But I used her idea of taking two tickets and sewing it all along the bottom of a transparency to create an extra pocket or a tuck. And then this is a, just a word card with a bit, tiny bit of lace sewn onto the end. Love, love, love the way that looks. I, and I've seen other people do it um, as well, but Tracy was the first one I saw do it. So... I am giving Tracy that credit. And this is a printed transparency. These, the ones, the ones I've got are from Tim Holtz, but any printed transparency will work. And if you don't have printed, you could use plain transparency. Somebody asked on the previous video also, I get transparency, I've got an old box, but you can purchase it through Amazon or Office Depot. Just check it because there's different thicknesses and I think they're like two or three ml, five ml, eight ml, and that'll give you, you want a middle weight. The really, really thin ones don't hold things well, and the really, really thick ones are hard to glue or sew. So go with the middle weight if you're if you're searching for some. And this was the tag at 2636 in the previous video. All right, base, card base, tag. This is just an off cut of coffee got dyed uh, card stock of some sort. It looks like, you know, it looks like this might be the th really thin watercolor paper or maybe it's the um, multimedia paper that's entirely possible and then you decide what length you want your tag this particular Tim Holtz transparency is about this length so I think I'll use that as my guideline now you can see here so that I could sew the top of the transparency to the tag without having to impede the hole and I could do it where I put it all the way to the top and sew down and then put the um, lace tag holder hole, I guess. But I'm going to, again, try to stay what I, with what I did on the previous one. So I'll drop it down a little bit. I don't know, that's what, three quarters of an inch or something like that. I don't think it's a full inch. Um, it's between half and three quarters. So, you know, just eyeball it. And then I will hold it in place. A lot of times I'll clip it in place. But for the sake of speed and ease here, I will just hold it in place. And then I'm going to sew. You could use, you could glue it down and then use washi tape to cover the glue if you like. That would work really well. Just make sure you glue the washi tape on top of it so that the washi doesn't peel up. Glue stick works well with washi as does just a fine line of art glitter or barely art or reptile glue, whatever glue your preference is. All right, and so that's sewn across the top. All right, and there's going to be one more bit that I sew at the bottom. But what I'm going to do now is trim this off. And the transparency was a smidge wider 
if you can see there, I don't know if you can, it's a smidge wider than the actual tag. So I'm going to trim that. And that's one of the reasons I left it a little bit of space at the end with my stitches, because I knew I wanted to trim that down and I wanted to give it a little bit of room. And uh -oh, it's just pretty, pretty even on that side. All right. Then you just cut the corners to make it into a tag. Now I'm going to use the punch simply because I have it and it's fast, but you, there's a gazillion videos on how to trim corners and you can just take two, two pieces off. All right, trim the corners. Oh, I didn't pull out that punch. This is a tag, badge tag punch, bag badge, badge punch, I believe is what it's called. And it's just kind of got a long oval. So if you haven't seen one of these and they're also available on Amazon, I imagine office supply stores would have them as well, but I got it on Amazon. And I'm going to eyeball the center. And then that's the place for my lace bit. Or, sorry, silk or whatever. All right, so that's the top of it. And now the bottom, to create the bottom of it, um, let's see if I can get this actually in frame so you can see it. That is two tags laid on top of each other and then sewn in place. I had this little itty bitty card that I thought the color wise it worked pretty well. So I might. And I teach in Tacoma, Washington, so I thought that was kind of cool. This says Tacoma, but um, it may not fit, so I might have to cut that off, which is okay too. So this particular one, because it's a little bit wider, I'm going to fold it in half, but you could also take, you know, a bus ticket and use that and fold it in half, or two of the Tim Holtz style tickets, like this, two of those, and just sew two of them together. You'd want the little bit larger ones this size, but you could take two of these and sew them front to back also so that you can get the same idea of a little bit of a pocket. But this one is large enough that I'm going to just fold it. And let's put it in frame so you can see. I am just going to fold it. And I'll trim it off to fit because I want it to fit in there. I'll save that Tacoma for something else, maybe. And if you're an inker, now is a great time to ink. I'm not going to use the back of this tag so much, though I could use it for journaling, and maybe I will, so maybe I should ink the back. I could definitely use this for journaling. And this is on a little bit heavier weight card, so it's kind of thick, so I'll definitely use the bone folder to get a decent crease on that. All right. And that just makes it a sharper crease at the bottom. Okay, a little bit of ink. Now the next step is to take your folded over bit and to sew it into place. Now. On this one, you can see, because I put two tickets together, I sewed around, did that whole piece, and then I put it on the transparency. I sewed it to the transparency because I used a different stitch. But because I folded this one, I don't need to take stitches here and here. I'm just going to sew it along the top. And I'll put a tiny bit of glue on the one side to hold it together. And I'll lay it along the bottom. And glue that into place and make sure it's mostly straight. You have a little bit of wiggle room there. There you go. All right, mostly straight. And now I'm going to just sew right along here. This part is glued. This is folded over so it makes that little tiny pocket. And then this will be my opening for the journaling card. Or in this case, I would just use a word label. And I'll use that same stitch in the same width, simply because it's there. Now I chose this machine simply because it has the thumb switch. I don't have to use the leg press. And I got this machine hmm, not very long ago on Amazon. It was oh, under $150. I don't remember the exact, but I just looked for a machine. This is a Singer Stylist has all kinds of fancy stitches that I never use, but it's a Singer Stylist 
and it has the thumb start and stop or finger start and stop. And those are just buttons too that you don't have to use the foot pedal if you choose not to. Okay, all right, that is that. And let's see, what else did I do on this one? Um, looks like I put the word tag, but that's just, um, not a word, yeah, just the word card. I, all I did was put print a word card or cut a word card and tuck it in. So you can put it whatever, whatever you choose in there. And then it looks like there's a bit of a label on this. Oh, there's a label there already. And you can use, um, okay, let me try to move this forward so you can see. Okay, you can use um, a label to kind of finish that off. You can use a ticket. I kind of like the color because of the, the fall orangey colors. Maybe I'll do that and, and then a number. Maybe I'll do it that way. Okay, I like that. I'll do that. You can't see the Tacoma, Washington there, which is kind of a bummer, but well, there's no reason I can't just bring it up a little bit higher, so I'll do that. And I think I'll have it come off the edge just a bit. And top, down low. No, you can still see Tacoma if I do it that way. Okay, I like that. I just tossed out some pieces, so I didn't know. Oh, well, maybe a smaller one. There's this one too. And that way you could see more of the, the word. But that's the same color. So maybe, oh, you know what? I'll put it up there. Then you can still see all of the Tacoma, but you've got a bit more of that color. So this is another tiny Tracy label. Okay. And put that up here. No, I want it at the end. All right. There you go. And then again, I would just put it on. Oh top. Sorry, here's a bit of sorry silk just because I've got some nearby. So to put this on the top, I ink it before I put the silk in because it's just a lot easier to do. And then if I wanted to, and I probably would, I could just cover the, actually I could write on it just like it is because it doesn't need anything. If I wanted to, to cover the stitches, I could um, put a little bit of washi tape or something. So there is the tag. And I am going to change the stitch just for the sake of, when I put these on, I almost always sew them simply because it makes it more flat. That's my sole reason. And less bulk, because I put, make things with plenty of bulk. So let's, I did a straight stitch, I switched it, just turned my machine on and off and that gives it a reset. Whoops, I made it mad. I don't know what I did, but I made it mad. Oh. I had loosened the back plate. Okay. Well, this is the foot, I should say, the foot of the machine. And they are, there's different ones. And it needs to... Well, I didn't get it in place. So sorry about that. Let's see what I did here. It's not picking it. Okay. Normally, the way this works... Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, and it just attaches. All right. I don't know what I did to make it mad, but I loosened it somehow. I probably hit the wrong button. There's a, a switch back here that allows you to change the foot on the machine, like if you're using a buttonhole or there's a gazillion quilting foot or what have you. This is just a basic, does everything kind of a foot. All right, sorry about that little snafu. And string on. I know there's a gazillion things I'm forgetting to say, but I'm trying to focus and get this done fairly quickly. So there you go. Same concept, same idea, just a little bit different twist look. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, this was this was for the tag to put inside the journaling piece, but we don't need to see that. It's just literally putting it inside. Okay, here we go. This one. Someone asked for this. And this is one of the pieces. <clears throat> pardon me. This one was at 1605. And this is a super, super simple one that I often do when I've got extra bits of a digital. I don't use a ton of digitals. Um, but when I've got extra digital. Oh, I keep pushing this back. That would be bad to have it fall off. 
when I've got extra digital or I'm just wanting to use some up, I'll do one of these type of the things. And it's just an extra piece of digital and um, it doesn't even really matter. It's usually single sided and usually the thin paper, not the, for these, the thicker paper. Um, I'll just use this one. I've grabbed a couple pieces. All right. And this, you fold it. Uh, let's see, am I even remotely in frame? You fold it in about half. Now I could measure this, I could score this, I could, I could do all the things, but you know what, really for this you don't need to. It's kind of an eyeball project and I'm not so great at eyeballs. So, and you leave about roughly a half an inch in the middle, roughly. And it doesn't even, of course, have to be a half an inch, but about a half an inch and crease it. And then when your alternate side is about the same, same idea. So that's, um, yeah, it is about a half an inch, top and bottom. And again, I could have used a scoreboard to make it perfect, but, and I could have measured. So if you're a little bit more of a perfectionist than I'm being right now, you can absolutely do that. All right. And then the way I got this color in the middle, because it's a single dyed sided, I took my ink pad. took my ink pad and I went like this down the middle. All right. That gave me that effect. And then I, you can either use the blending brush or either, either tool, it doesn't really matter. And then just fill in the blank where there's a little bit of white where I ran it, ran it down. And that's how I got that effect. Just smear some of this ink around. Then you have color in the middle. Oh, let me move this out of your way. You've got color in the middle when you had a solid white paper. It's a, it's a quick way to get that effect. You can always put a scrap of paper in there um, or ink it with just a regular blending tool and just brush it, but I like it that way. I'll ink the edges in a little bit. And, oops, sorry about that loud noise. Bone folder to crease the edges. All right, so you've got it. Here's your, here's our stopping point here. Our point. You can see it's a lot wider, so I could actually make two of these. And in fact, I think I will. I will have two smaller ones, a little bit smaller. Trim this down. So I've got two of the same exact pieces. And then fold it. So you've got the opening in the middle and then fold it in half. So your sides are the same. Folds like I'm so in half. And in half. All right. Then, in order to make it so that it opens all the way to the edge, what I do is, again, you can score it or you can just fold it completely up to you. I'll score one and I'll fold one. I'll fold about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch on the bottom. About a quarter of an inch. You kind of want that straight. So if, if it makes more sense for you to score it, absolutely score it. But you have a little bit of fold wiggle room when you're gluing. So, you know, I don't know, it's not crucial, but so fold it up. Then unfold it and you've got something that looks like this with a bunch of creases. You can do it one of two ways. I find it a little bit easier to leave the right and left side pieces intact and cut down the middle. But if it makes more sense for you to cut the middle, you can do that. I just think it makes a little more sense for me to cut down the right, cut down the left, and then I cut off right at the line where I folded it. I don't know how well you can see that here, but that crease line, I'll cut right along that crease line. If you've got one of the paper trimmers, the Fiskars paper trimmers that does that start and stop feature, this is really handy for that. Makes it super easy to cut this off. You know, the ones with the replaceable blade, the drop-in replaceable blade where you just, um, you can start it exactly where you want, pull it across and then stop it exactly where you want. And 
I'm cutting the bottom at an angle to the right sided crease and the bottom crease and then I did the same thing on the left with the left sided crease and the bottom crease. And I will trim this side off. Okay, so mine looks like this. You could do it the opposite way and you could take these pieces off if that makes more sense to you. And then I'm going to do the same thing on these corners. Just trim those down a little bit. That way when I fold them, they won't impede the maneuverability of the pockets. Okay, then I'll fold that down and this down. And I'll just fold it straight with the cut that I made. If you can see there, I fold it straight with the cut that I made. And the same thing on the other side. Okay. I've got the cord here with the microphone because sometimes I mumble when I talk, I've been told. So there you go and there you go. And you know what? These, um, these are a little bit, this is probably more like no, this is a full and half an inch, and this is maybe not quite a half an inch. So if I don't have enough of an opening, I'll just trim this down. It, I want it to be a little bit more space in between, so I'll trim both the right and the left about the same. Again, it does not, absolutely does not have to be perfect, but there we go. That's the beauty of this particular project. Now I'm going to get a circle punch. And this is, I don't know, maybe an inch, an inch and a half, something like that on this circle punch. This one happens to be an inch and three eighths. It was the first one I grabbed. I open this up and fold it in half when I punch. And that way I'm guaranteed my whole punches will line up because I am not great at gauging the middle and I'm not great at making them the same. So to me, it's worth the extra few seconds to do this because I would not center it correctly otherwise. And again, I don't, again, I don't truly don't mind if it's perfect, but I want it to be kind of close. And I'll mark the middle. And then I take a partial divot out of each. It doesn't even have to be a lot. It, whatever whole circle punch you've got. And I, if, if you're new to this, and I've got said several people say that they're new to junk journaling and to my channel. I when I'm talking about supplies, one that you'll use, most people use very, very frequently and is worth the investment is a couple different sizes of circle punches. They have a ton of uses and you can find them often at thrift stores, secondhand stores, yard sales, that type of thing if you don't want to purchase a new one. But they come in really handy. So I inked those edges because it just makes more sense. And then all I have to do now is glue it down. And, you know, I was going to show you the second one, but it's the exact same principle. You do the same thing, and you, the idea is that you can make it in any size that meets your journaling needs, your whatever size journal you're working with or whatever size scraps you've got. So I'm going to cut those down, or glue those down. And the same thing on this side, just a thin bead of glue on each side. glue those down. Now, this can be an individual item that you put, can be a single item that you tuck in and out. But generally what I do, because there's a seam right here, I will put this in a signature of a journal and I won't do glue these in place until I'm almost done with the journal so that I can like if I wanted to sew something or glue something or make a pocket on the back side. So this would be an insert in your signature right? And then you open it and you've got a pocket on the left and a pocket on the right and then whatever pieces you had on the back. So again, I would probably, well I definitely would, I would put this a long strip in my signature before I assemble the signature together and then I would sew, actually I didn't sew this one, I would glue this in place after I'd sewn the signature into the center seam. That. And that's that simple. You've got a little fold over with little pocket pockets and great individually by itself, a paper clipped in, or you could sew it into your signature. And I'd ink all the rest of the edges, but don't need to do that now. Okay, there's another one. Okay, 
rolling with oh man this is going to be long i am so sorry you know what i have got let's see one i'm gonna go with part a and part b i am just making that executive decision because the video is getting way too long so thank you very much for watching i'm going to call this part a and the other what five or six pieces i will call part b take care happy creating